Okay, my friends, watershed breakthrough day for mud fossils. Mysterious rocks are the oldest evidence of life on Earth, scientists say. This is from today, 14th of November, 2022. And they're talking about stromatolites being biology. Here's what it says right here. Now a new analysis by an international team of researchers provides strong evidence that these formations really are biological in origin and not the result of non-living processes. Okay, let me just read you this. It says stromatolites, which is what we're going to be looking at in a minute, dating back billions of years, are found scattered around the world. They're everywhere. They consist of laminated or finely layered rock that could be produced either by mineralized layers, microbial matting, non-living chemical reactions between the rock and its environment. Well, now they realize that that's not the case. The job of paleontologists to, tr paleontologists to try to work out which is which is not always easy. They take these stromatolite-like layers in Greenland, which were first declared the world's oldest fossils, then they found to be just plain old rocks. Well, I don't agree with that either. The identification of the oldest fossils on the marvelous 4.54 billion year old blue marble, and that's a pretty big jump of ours isn't just an exercise in breaking records, it's of deep interest to all of us when and where life first developed on earth. The ancient origins of humanity and all the life that thrives today. That's what we're going to look at because it's just to it's, it's what they said in the ancient Greeks. <laughs> Okay, this is just out today. They're saying these mysterious rocks are the oldest evidence of life on Earth, scientists say. Originally, they thought they were just rocks. Now they say tracking down the oldest traces of life on Earth isn't easy. Smoosh a bunch of microbes between layers of rock and let them ripen for billions of years. What you end up with is going to resemble rock more than an ancient life form. But now they have found out these are life forms. But they don't they still don't understand what they are. I'll show you what they are. These stromatolites. See, here's what they say right now. Now a new analysis by an international team of research researchers provides strong evidence these formations are biological in origin and not the result of non living processes. Well, that's true, but they don't understand the biology either. You see that? These are stromatolites, these balls. You see them? And you see this down under here, all this wavy stuff? That is what's called interstitium. This is biology. Those balls are anchors so that that interstitium can stretch and pull and do all that, and it'll come back to where those balls are. Fossilized stromatolites. Okay, these are also stromatolites. And now they say they are biological in origin. I can show you that is a fact. All right, these are the kind of things they're talking about. They're not just biology. This is, I'm sorry. All right, these are what they call the stromatolites. Well, so are these. These are all over the earth, everywhere on the shores, on the ocean shores. You see these balls everywhere where they're wearing away at these these layers of what I'm going to tell you is tissue. This is bodily tissue. These, these creatures that inhabited this earth were absolutely staggeringly large. Now, these are skin emplacements as these are. That's the skin. This is what's called interstitium. These are the balls. And here is the anatomy of it right here. All right, here it is right here. There's the top layer, there's all that webbing, which is the red stuff, and all the balls which have eroded out, and the mud underneath is from this erosion. There it is right there. We were looking at the exact same thing. That's the skin. This is the fleshy stuff under the skin. These are the balls that anchor that flesh so that it can come back after it stretches and moves to wherever the balls were here. And they're on little straps, just as you can see up above and on springs so that they can flex. These little th brown things are the springs. 
and they can flex and the bags can do all this kind of stuff and move around and the balls will they will come back to where they're supposed to be this is literally the the fleshy stuff we just looked at this is a big shot of it from far, far away and you can see there's a membrane here and then you get to here which is here and then all this stuff is the little balls here this white layer is a special layer that I'm going to call the in immunothelium, which is where all the enzymes live to protect you from what tries to get through these layers down into you. And there is literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of layers in each one of these membranes. People don't know how thick they are. And this is way down as you get down into actually looking at this. It's the same thing as you're looking at right here. This is exactly the same as this. And the black balls are the black balls. All right, so, and then one ball is, well, you can't see it, but one ball they show right over here, but it's one of these balls. Now, what we have just seen is this. There was skin across this. These were all evenly placed out with all little straps so that they could move around and do all this. It all eroded and mud is run all over, over here. This is all mud run from this which was the same thing as what has eroded away from here. And it'll continue to erode away. This is skin. These were biological. The earth was a living bodily creature at one time. I don't know if it won, the whole thing was one body. or like, I'm absolutely certain there's, a, there's tons of bodies all over the earth. I have found them. And I have giant human beings here, which are DNA tested. One of them is over 160 feet tall if it's anatomically perfect. And I believe they are because the fingertip is three feet long and it is anatomically flawless, including fingerprints. All right, they said these stromatolites are biological. And I think I have shown you exactly what the biology is. And this earth was covered with creatures that are just spectacularly large. And these what they call is these uh, giants causeway and all these um, lava tubes they call them. No, they're not. Those are tendons. This, this earth is so much different than we were taught. It's unbelievable. And all of this stuff is biology. You see this? This is the size of the membranes. They have campfires they put in here and sit around here and have campfires. This is one layer, which is the lower layer of a membrane. This membrane in us, you would be able to hold it up and look through it and be able to see through it. This is six feet above is where the top layer is. Six feet above this is where the top layer is. <laughs> and all this aqueous stuff. There's a lot of fluidy stuff in here and it just all goes away. You see this little thing right there? That's one of these. You see these? These are those. These are these tubes, these channels, and they let food in and out and enzymes in and out of a creature that was so spectacularly large we could just can't imagine. And it, 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 these, every culture had that story that the, the earth was made out of bodies. And so are all the celestial bodies, they're supposedly. And I pretty much can can say that I, I see that no question whatsoever that's true my next video is going to be on this all right now before we move on I just want to be sure that I mentioned this is from Tyson he's a friend of mine out on the west coast in Oregon and um, it's Tyson's mud fossil adventures now he shows a lot of different landscape which is all biology it's all 100% biology it's, it's, it's absolutely incredible the earth is built from creatures. I'm sorry, that's just a fact. Okay, this is that Hunstanton's Cliffs in the United Kingdom. And that is the immunothelium layer that I think I talked about. And below that is the interstitium. Above that is the skin layer. Now you see all of these these layers. You, if you could see, there's a, a bazillion little fine layers. Even, they look like big layers, but they're not. If you go real up close, you can see they're they're very fine layers. They look big, but they're not. And then right below the immunothelium, 
is there's another sort of a barrier region. Every one of them has a barrier. That's a little tiny membrane. That's a little tiny membrane. And it separates this working area, which is where the enzymes, fluids run through, from this working area, which is your interstitium, from this working area, which is the skin that protects you from the environment. If you break through this, that's no big deal. You're you're pretty well protected because there's all kind of enzymes right here that you're ready to attack anything that comes through. That's a whole other story because this all works <laughs> into into your immune system too. You know, it's hard to believe this is true. The stuff I've shown you, all those balls and stuff, is the interstitium, a newfound organ. They didn't realize this even existed until 2018. And a lot of it was, I, I was looking into this and I could see all those little tiny balls and those little all of that stuff was in my mud fossils and they never saw it because when they did the autopsies and so forth they dried out all the tissues and all they saw was a flat mat so this is brand new they never even knew this existed so a lot of this stuff you have to start over again and start thinking again so here's what it says right here researchers said the fluid filled spaces had been missed for decades because they don't show up on standard microscope slides the reason is because they flatten them out and put chemicals and all that so then they find out this is what it really looks like and see rather than using such slides the researchers discovered the fluid filled spaces by using a new imaging technique well my technique is i look at the giant mud fossils Alright, remember I showed you the layers of tissue and then the layers of the interstitium and then it goes down into muscle below that. I don't know if it, we actually got down to muscle, but we did get down to the interstitium. This is a section all the way down past the muscle. This is muscle. This is some kind of a connective tissue, looks like to me. Every one of these layers, remember I told you it has a ton of different layers? Well, they have a ton of different layers. And that's, these are not sedimentation. This is not sedimentation. This is body tissue. You see millions of years in one picture? No, it's not. That's not millions of years in one picture. That's one creature's body in one picture. And I don't think it took them, you know, forever to die, 150 million years. I wouldn't say it took that long to die. This is the same sort of stuff as I was just showing you at Huntington Beach. Only this is a different part of the body. It's not the fleshy part where it's eroding into where all those big balls are. This is some kind of a, a really tough, muscly area. Well, I have literally hundreds and hundreds of specimens. This is muscle. This is my shop. That's the muscle portion. That's where the abrupt transition is where it sort of takes off into the tendon and then the tendon has like a extremely tough 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 as hell glue that glues it to the bone now this is where all of the blood comes on you see the red coming out of these that's that's a gigantic artery too this whole thing would have been filled with red blood and that's what comes down to service these very very demanding muscles any any anatomist there's no denying this there's a muscle mountain. All of that is connective tissue primarily. And most of the red has eroded out. You see the red, the fleshy stuff erodes out. See over here? That's what happens. That's the stuff that's the cheap stuff, I call it. And the other stuff is tough. It's tough. It's, it's connective tissue. You've got to be held together by something. And this is the stuff that holds you together. This is the stuff that makes it do things. And that's what the red stuff runs out of. You need blood everywhere. And this is the guy's van right here. So we're talking a fairly good sized chunk of muscle. Oh, this is going to be great, this next video. This is interstellar. Well, what does interstellar mean? It means it came from some other star system. This is a Maumaru, which I know exactly what this is. I can show it to you, which I have. I've just done some recent videos on this particular a meteorite, or asteroid, whatever you want to call it. Now, I also have studied Comet 67P P in such detail, you can't get any more detail than I have on it. I have spectral analysis, I have everything you want to see on Comet 67P, and I understand all of the biology.
because it is a bio biological part. And I will show you, and I will prove this, and I feel that we are in a living universe. If this came from another part of stellar system, that means they have body parts too, because that is a body part. Stay tuned for the next video. It's going to talk all about this. I'm going to show in pretty good detail that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be hard to, to go against. And I would like it if anybody would come up against me and say, Oh, Roger, you're crazy because of this, this, and that. Not just I'm crazy. Because of why. That's what I want to get into is a discussion. And that's why I've been having a hard time getting people to crack open. It's getting there. It is getting there. So we're right on the edge, my friends, of trying to understand our reality. And that's every time I read it, it's, oh, we want to understand, we want to understand, we're trying to figure out our origins. And I don't think that's a fact. I think they're trying to figure out a way to make this thing produce income. That's all I have seen. All right, you've seen my evidence about the stromatolites and all that business on Earth and how I believe Earth is a biological creature. I don't think there's anything but biology here. And if, I'll be honest with you, I don't think there's anything but biology anywhere. Now, we're going to be talking about Amaro Amaro. That came from interstellar. That means it came from another star system. If this is biology, that's pretty important. All right, get your astrophysicists to, 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 to tell me what that's all about and all these little pinchy bundles and all these little strap looking things on all of this and all this little debris that came out of here. They had a lander actually land there. I followed this thing every single day. And I, and and it w and they were wide open with their information. And um, there was two little particles they took. They're called Kenneth and Juliet. And they analyzed them in their biology. This is 100% biology. I have the spectral analysis. You see this? This is what they found. Kenneth and Juliet, these are the different particles. These are all the different oxygen states that are in in living creatures. Ferrous oxides. You got sodium, silicons, carbon, hydrocarbons, and they say they nothing they could say other than that, yes, this looks like it's all biology. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with this thought. Space smells like burning steak, I wonder why. All right, this is in space. This is Comet 67P. This goes back to 2015. Very, very detailed research on this. This is an artery. That's why it's huge blast of gas is coming out of there, because it's cooking the blood that is in that artery, which is absolutely enormous. Huge, huge, huge artery. These are little blood vessels that service all the little tissue around. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. All of this is broken off. It was like a leg or something. This looks to me like a, a, an ankle, something like that. And coming up where the tendon emphasis is, and then there's one little bundle of muscle. This is not cooking off because this, this is the anchor. These are anchors. There's not a whole lot of blood on these. Where the blood comes up is where it services, and this is the feeder that fed all that. These are the little anchors and that would have been up to something about at that level, locked in to something. I don't know what it's from, I don't know what kind of creature it was, I have no idea. But it's floating around in space and it's cooking meat gases off into space.